Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guide video on definitions of averages and ranges for GCSE mathematics. Now to start in this video, we're going to have a look at the three averages that you need to know for GCSE maths. You're probably very familiar with them already. And what I'm going to do is take a look at the definition that I often hear from students uh, when I ask them what they understand by the meaning of these three averages. And then I'm going to try and revise that definition to something that is a little bit more mathematical, a little bit more helpful in terms of the language that's used in GCSE mathematics. So let's start off with the mode. Now when I ask about this, I often get, well, mode is most common. Now that's not incorrect, but I'm just going to change the language used slightly. I'm going to change that definition to most frequent or most frequently occurring value. That's because in GCSE maths, we tend to deal with frequency uh, quite a lot. So in terms of frequency tables, frequency diagrams, frequency polygons, the word frequency is used very often, and it's quite important to tie that in to mode. If you're looking in a frequency table for the modal value or modal group, then it is uh, the value or group with the highest frequency that you're looking for. Let's move on to the median. Well, I often get that's the middle number. Again, that's true, but there is a condition on it. So let's just alter the definition slightly. I'm going to say the middle value because we're dealing with a data set of values. When the values are placed in order of magnitude, that's just a fancy way of saying uh, place them in order. Now, the order that you usually have them is ascending. So going from smallest to largest, from maximum to minimum. But they can be descending, you should still get the same middle value, you should still get the same median. But typically they're ascending. Certainly uh, you view it as ascending in the stem and leaf diagram, or perhaps in a list of numbers you'd put them from smallest to largest. And then finally let's have a look at the mean. While quite often I get this definition, you've probably, you've probably heard it many, many times before, maybe you've used it yourself. Add them all up and divide by how many there are. Well yes, that is what you do to calculate the mean but it might be better to use some of the mathematical language to just define that just a little bit more clearly. Now, I've used this. You might use something slightly different. Um, if you've certainly got a better definition of the, the mean, uh, then feel free to, to pop that in the comments if you're a teacher or a student, and um, that would be great to share that around. Uh, but I've got the total sum of the values. We should understand that sum is adding the values together. So it's the total of all those values added together divided by the number of values. So another way of phrasing that is the sum of the frequency. Now that's quite useful if we're dealing with frequency tables because we know that the number we need to divide by is the sum of the frequency column. Now that's quite often given in the question, 100 people, 50 students, 75 cars, whatever it might be, whatever the, the data set might be relating to. But if you're not sure, or if, it, or if it's not given, you know that you can total the frequency column, sum total, and that's the number you're going to be dividing by. The number on the top, the total sum of the values, say if we're talking about scores in a test for students, well, that's going to be adding all the scores of the students to, together, uh, and then we'll be divided by the number of students that we have and that will average the score for the students in that class. Let's move on to having a look at the ranges. Now, one of the key things that's quite important to understand here is that uh, range is not an average. It's, in fact, a measure of spread, so how spread out your data is. And there's two different variations that we use at GCSE Maths. The definition that I often get for the range is highest take away lowest. That is what you need to do to work out the range. But let's just put that in more mathematical terms. It's the difference between the maximum and the minimum value. So you find the difference by subtraction. You want the highest value, the maximum, and the minimum value, the, the smallest. And you may also be required to find out or use interquartile range. So again, I often get the it's upper quartile take away lower quartile, so let's just change that to a slightly more mathematical definition. It's the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile, and it's going to represent the middle 50% of the values. So it's going to represent the 25% that's above the median and the 25% that's below the median. We're eliminating the highest 25%, the highest quarter, and the lowest 25%, the lowest quarter. 
Now let's have a look at uh, what this means. Well, having a large range or an interquartile range means that the values are more spread out or another way of phrasing this is that they are less consistent. There is a big difference between your uh, maximum value and your minimum value. And conversely, a small range or interquartile range means that the values are less spread out or more consistent. Now, consistent just means getting the same or very similar results time and time again. So if you've got a small range, that means most of your results are tending to come out the same or being very close to the median or the middle value. So that's what consistency is all about. And it's a great word to use if you're comparing a data in the exam to use that word consistent because that will let the examiner know that you have a good understanding of what's meant by the range or the interquartile range not just how to work it out but that you understand that it's referring to the spread that smaller ranges means more consistency larger ranges means less consistency now why the interquartile range might be a little bit more useful than the range is that it removes any outlying values. So any values that are very high or very low, which can skew your data. So if you've got uh, values that are very, very high, very, very far away from the median, or very, very small, you know, very far away from the median in the other direction, then that will extend the range, but it wouldn't necessarily extend the interquartile range because you're only looking at the middle values. And what happens in the middle 50% tend to uh, be closer to the median. So you're eliminating these really uh, extremes either end. So therefore, you're going to have a measure of the spread of the middle 50% uh, and taking out the possibility of having any really high or really small values. So there we go. Hopefully we've got a clearer and sharper definition of the three averages that you need to know for GCSE and the ranges, the range and the interquartile range that you also need to know. Using that mathematical language will help in terms of you being able to understand the sort of things that you need to pick out from the question when you're trying to answer questions regarding averages and range, particularly uh, if you get a question where you're asked to compare two data sets uh, and typically you perhaps compare the average, maybe the mean and then the range. And we can talk about uh, which is higher or lower on average, which is uh, more or less consistent. Okay, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time on The Calculator Guide.